Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the official college football opt-out update video where I go through all of the bowl games, talk about the recent trends as it pertains to potential betting with opt-out updates. I'll probably be doing a follow-up video to this next week to give everyone an update, but this is just the first look. We've already got some big, unfortunate opt-outs in the world of college football. We're going to be quickly going through every bowl game, and there is also some significant betting trends to look at. There's some high-depth analysis here with this uh, uh, article here. So Georgia, Ohio State, obviously Georgia is going to be a hold. There's not going to be any opt-outs in that if for Georgia. Uh, for Ohio State, um, JSN, the situation with him is really interesting and I want to do a separate video on it. I'm not going to discuss it right now, but you could potentially put him as an opt-out and really not an injury based on what we're hearing. But um, yeah, Ohio State standard is what they've ever been. We thought they might get JSN back, but this is the same team they've had for basically the entire season. Uh, Michigan TCU, you know, there's really not going to be any opt-outs. They're a hold. I would agree with that. Um, it says Michigan projects as a nine-point favorite. I think that line is down to eight or seven and a half. Yeah, Mike Morris was injured, but I think he's coming back. We know Blake Corum is out for the year. Oh, Colston Loveland, he left the Big Ten. Oh, he came back. Yeah, he's a good young tight end. And then TCU, there is nothing to report. So TCU comes in to the playoff fully loaded, obviously. The Rose Bowl, uh, the, oh, Utah starting running back opted out, but apparently he hasn't been good this year. Um, looks like they're saying to buy Utah overall. That's interesting. Uh, they like Utah. They like Kyle Whittingham, 9-5 and five against the spread in bowl games. I like Utah to win that game and cover the 1.5 as well. Joey Porter Jr. is opting out for this game for Penn State. He is their shutdown cornerback. He's going to be a first-round pick. That is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I would take Utah in that game. USC and Tulane. Uh, Caleb Williams possibly injured. That's why they're saying to sell USC minus the two. And then for Tulane, they're saying buy. Uh, they've been one of the best teams against the spread, 11-2. and two. Uh, Again, I think they're plus two and a half or plus two right now the last time I checked. Kansas State, uh, Adrian Martinez was seen without a boot but did not play in the Big 12 championship. That would be interesting if they got him back. But their backup is pretty good. And then for Alabama, I mean, I think you have to wait for, you know, they've got so many transfers, but Bryce Young, Will Anderson, Jordan Battle, uh, Brian Branch, the great safety. So there could be a lot of guys for Alabama opting out in this game. You know, I actually, I'm not even sure if they've made a line for this game yet. I haven't seen one, but I haven't checked in a few days, so I don't know. Uh, Clemson versus Tennessee. They uh, have, uh, D, you know, DJ Uilangile in the portal. There was a rumor that Clemson was going to lose a bunch of kids to transfer, but the kids that they're losing, EJ Williams is interesting. Kobe Pace is a backup. DJ, we all knew that. So, you know, Clemson is a favorite in this game with Tennessee with the injury to uh, Hendon Hooker, and they're saying to sell Tennessee. I agree. I like Clemson minus the four. Uh, in this game because you have the injury and, and you're also dealing with a Clemson team that really has a lot of momentum as long as there are no more transfers. LSU and Purdue. LSU right now is a hold. Brian Kelly though has gone five and nine. I don't I don't I don't really buy into trends like that too much. Like you know, that's a lot of, you know, history and stuff. That has really nothing to do about this year. And then when it comes to Purdue, they're saying to buy Purdue. So I would disagree with that. But may, again, maybe I should look at it again and not be so bullheaded. I like LSU minus, minus six and a half. I think they're going to crush Purdue, but we will see. You've got Illinois, Mississippi State. They're a hold right now. They really have no issues. Uh, maybe Chase Brown opts out, although that's just speculation. I think he's like projected to be a third-round pick right now. We'll see. Mississippi State, they are a hold, but Mike Leach does have a disturbing trend. He's 3-9 and nine against the spread in postseason games. Kentucky, 
they will likely, you know, it says Will Levis remains a potential opt-out. And guys, the overall, you know, the over-under in this game is 31 and a half. If he opts out, could you imagine? I think if you're if you can get Iowa plus three, it is phenomenal right now. That's a bet I would make right now with the idea that uh, you know, uh, Will Levis could potentially opt out. And then for Iowa, it says they're starting. <laughs> Spencer Petrus had his hand in the sl- in a sling the second half. He will miss the bowl game. And their backup quarterback did go into the portal, I believe. Yes, their backup quarterback did go into the portal. I'm not sure who their starting quarterback is going to be. Quite honestly, it can't be much worse than what they're already working with. Iowa might win this game uh, by scoring like five safeties. I'm kidding, but probably by punting the ball. Ohio and Wyoming, nothing with Ohio. Wyoming, they're saying to buy Wyoming. Wyoming ended the season with five straight unders. Yes, guys, the under 44 in this game, I love it. Ohio's quarterback is out. He's he's out for the year. I would say take the under. North Carolina, or excuse me, Notre Dame and South Carolina, they're a hold right now. Michael Mayer, I think Michael Mayer will play. I have a feeling he will play, but he is an opt-out to watch. And then South Carolina, yeah, they are definitely playing better. They're plus four in this game. I don't know if I would take them, but they definitely have momentum. Pittsburgh, UCLA, Slovis is in the portal. Guys, I'm selling Pittsburgh. Oh my God. I would say take UCLA with their situation right now. Um, You know, in terms of Pittsburgh, they can't throw the ball and their starting quarterback is in the portal. I think UCLA is minus four, but that could have changed with the portal situation. NC State and Maryland, they're a hold right now. Devin Larry, he's out. He's in the portal. We know that. Fourth string quarterback played in the team's final two games. Who knew? Wow. For Maryland, nothing to report at all. There should be no opt-outs. They are an absolute hold. You've got Washington and Texas. Washington right now a buy. Yeah, guys, Washington plus three and a half seems like great value as long as Bijan Robinson opts out, which we expect him to do. Possible opt-outs include Bijan Robinson, their other running back and a linebacker. So we will see what happens there. It should be a higher scoring game. FSU and Oklahoma. Uh, Florida State ended the street ended the season on a hot streak. I believe they're seven point favorites. Oklahoma lost a few players. It says the stock on them is to buy though. Yeah, I have heard a lot of people say that Oklahoma is great value plus seven, but I'm not betting against FSU right now. I'm really not. Um, Syracuse, it says to sell Syracuse. I couldn't agree more. My only concern in this game for for Minnesota to cover a seven-point spread is Minnesota's lack of passing offense. That would be my only issue. P.J. Fleck is undefeated against the spread in bowl games. Yeah, it seems like a great value for Minnesota, minus seven. Texas Tech and Ole Miss. Texas Tech won and covered in the final three games of the season. Yes, they did, but there is a caveat. That last game against Oklahoma, I mean, I I don't know if that's sustainable. I think they won 44-41. to Ole Miss, it's saying to sell Ole Miss. Ole Miss failed to cover in five of its last six games. They don't have any opt-outs, I don't think. Jackson Dart, Zach Evans... All their running backs should be playing. I mean, my initial thought is I like Ole Miss minus three and a half, but the trend is to sell Ole Miss based on them not covering. This should be a high-scoring game. Oregon and North Carolina. Bo Nix is playing in this game. Oregon is big favorites. They are losing a lot of players to the portal, uh, but I don't think any of these players, Thornton, the wide receiver, I know caught a few touchdowns, but I don't think any of them were crazy impactful Bo Nix is playing. Uh, Josh Downs might opt out. Wow, that would be a big loss. Uh, I have the under in this game, the under 73. It just seems like a lot based on how bad North Carolina's offense has been recently. Arkansas versus Kansas. Uh, Malik Hornsby, the backup quarterback, is in the portal. Uh, Bowl game opt-outs. Hazelwood is opting out. Is he going to be? No way. That's a, I, don't, I don't think he's going to be a first-round pick. K.J. Jefferson is staying... And then for Kansas State, they're saying buy Kansas, or excuse me, for Kansas, they're saying buy Kansas. 
uh, plus the four because there's motivation. This is their first bowl game since 2008. That is crazy. Uh, Duke versus UCF by Duke. Duke won four of its final five games, bringing its total to eight wins. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I, I, I would bet UCF minus the one and a half. Um, Plumlee was limited in the AAC championship. As long as he plays, I'm buying UCF. UCF is just better team. Uh, Wisconsin versus Oklahoma State. It's saying to sell Wisconsin. Although interim coach Jim Leonard will coach this game. Luke Fickle plans the coach in some capacity in prep. Wow, that's a weird dynamic. So Jim Leonard is coaching this game, but Luke Fickle will also be coaching it. Wisconsin had only 11 pass attempts from quarterback not named Mertz. Wow. Uh, so they don't have a lot of experience, but Oklahoma State has not been good either. Oklahoma State failed to cover in four of its final games. Spencer Sanders, their starting quarterback, is transferring. Mason Cobb, he is a really solid linebacker. He is also transferring. So I would say I like Wisconsin, but again, that's a tough situation. Wisconsin has big unknowns at the quarterback position. Georgia Southern, their quarterback will face, but oh, a, a revenge game. A revenge game for Georgia Southern. And then but they're saying to sell Buffalo. Buffalo uh, qualified for a bowl in a comeback against Akron by a point. Buffalo was on a three-game losing streak. It did not cover. Wow. So that is revealing. Um, yeah, I would say Georgia Southern would be a good bet based on that data. East Carolina versus Coastal Carolina. Mike Houston is 5-2-1 against the spread for the postseason. Yeah, Coastal Carolina, um, I believe they're getting Grayson McCall back. It says the backup started the final regular season game, but McCall came back in their conference championship. It's saying to sell um, Coastal Carolina because of the head coaching situation. Tim Beck has taken over, and apparently that was a horrible hire. I saw that hire get graded out as an F, apparently. Utah State versus Memphis, possibly the worst bowl game. Utah State is a hold. Utah State finished the season going over in three straight games. Wow. Memphis, nothing to report. New Mexico State, BGSU, their starting quarterback is in the portal. Wow. Wow. Um, they are one and a half point underdogs, New Mexico State. It's great that they made a bowl game. Uh, they're saying to sell Bowling Green. Guys, I would not bet this game either way, but Bowling Green is, you know, they're one and a half point favorites. They're pretty bad. San Diego State, it's saying to buy San Diego State. I love San Diego State in this one against Middle Tennessee, personally. Um, no injuries to report or transfers for Middle Tennessee. Missouri, uh, they lost a pretty solid receiver in the portal, though there's no doubt, but they do keep the superstar freshman, Luther Burden. Wake Forest, it's saying to sell. I agree. I have Missouri winning this game outright. I have Missouri winning it outright. Houston versus Louisiana. Is their starting... No, no, no. That's their backup quarterback. Houston failed to cover in four of its final five games. So they're saying to sell Houston. I don't know. I think Houston's going to score a lot, personally. And then there's really nothing to report for Louisiana, except their backup quarterback is starting. Air Force versus Baylor. I agree with this. I think Air Force is great value, plus six and a half. And I like Baylor. I like Baylor, but Air Force, they finished hot. Yep. And then for Baylor, it's saying they lost uh, its final three games. Those are tough. That's a tough schedule, though. I like Baylor, but seven-point favorites over Air Force. It's disrespectful to Air Force. South Alabama versus Western Kentucky. It's saying to buy South Alabama. Absolutely, guys. This comes down to the Western Kentucky situation with Austin Reed. Austin Reed enters the portal, and they have only 16 passing attempts between these two QBs, it's so sad. Uh, yeah, you're gonna want to. You're not. You're not gonna want to bet on Western Kentucky. And I would also take the under in that South. Well, they uh, the over under. I'm guessing plummeted in that game. But South Alabama has a good defense. Western Kentucky starting a very inexperienced quarterback. Uh, Toledo versus Liberty. It's saying to hold Toledo. They won and covered in the MAC championship. Yeah, but they really have not been good. Liberty. 
It's saying to sell them. It's due to Hugh Freeze leaving. And, and really, Liberty's last game of the season, they got crushed by New Mexico State. So I think Toledo, one and a half, maybe two point favorites in that one. San Jose State, Eastern Michigan. Wow, it's saying to sell San Jose State. And this was another upset I picked. I have Eastern Michigan winning this game. Um, and they are good value to win it because they do have a high power, or they, they don't have a high powered offense, but they have an offense that can generate explosive plays. They're the typical MAC team to win a bowl game. Uh, UConn versus Marshall. It's saying to buy UConn plus the 10, and there are a lot of people on UConn, which is really surprising. I mean, you can take a look at Marshall. They won its final, final four games, they covered in three of their last four. Their defense is phenomenal. That's one to look at. They're 10-point favorites. Uh, Boise State versus North Texas. Boise State, it's saying to buy them. They finished the regular season covering in seven of their last eight games. Of course, they lost their conference championship. And then for North Tex Texas, it's saying to sell. Uh, so Boise State looks like a pretty good bet right there. Florida versus Oklahoma State, or excuse me, Oregon State. Uh, there it is, guys. Anthony Richardson. Wow, and they lost the big, wow, and they lost their their potential first or second round interior offensive guard, Torrance. That is crazy. You're not going to want to bet on Florida. You Florida always has these opt-outs. It's crazy. Um, and then Oregon State, they have a backup quarterback who's transferring. Chance Nolan, he was terrible this year. Yeah, that is a real bad game. Next, we have Southern Miss versus Rice. Uh, Southern Miss is a hold. They covered in their five of their last six games. Good for them. And then Rice. Rice is horrible. They're just not a good team. So yeah, Southern Miss seems like a good bet. Fresno State versus Washington State. I love Fresno State. And there is no opt-outs. There's no injuries at this moment. Uh, Washington State loses their top two receivers to the transfer portal. Yeah, you're going to want to bet on Fresno State in this one. I love Fresno State. BYU versus SMU. Uh, their starting quarterback, Hall, left with an ankle injury. Is he going to play? Oh, that could be a big issue. SMU. I might bet on SMU if BYU's quarterback's out. Uh, Cincinnati versus Louisville. You have, I would sell Cincinnati. Evan Prater did not look good at all at all when he came in for Ben Bryant and he will be playing and they also have you know Luke Fickle leaving and then for Louisville Malik Cunningham is a potential opt-out is he really I would think he would play oh he re-aggravated his shoulder ouch there so both of these teams are a sell I, I would bet on Louisville honestly I bet the under in that game guys bet the under that's an 11 a.m game Troy versus UTSA um, it's saying to buy Troy and hold UTSA. Yeah, both of these teams are really good. I would bet on UTSA minus one and a half. UAB versus Miami of Ohio. I love UAB, guys. I think UAB is going to crush Miami of Ohio. Uh, but those are the official bowl game updates. Again, guys, I'll probably do an update to this update next week when we get more players opting out. But there are definitely some games to be had, some bets to be made. That Cincinnati, Louisville, the under based on everything going on there is a good one. There's a lot of other ones that I will be talking about in a coming video. But guys, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.